Welcome to Big Sky Writer, the podcast for storytellers of all shapes and sizes. Here's the host of Big Sky Writer, Clint Morey. The world seems to be opening up around me. Now in my state, we've moved to phase two of the pandemic. I can see cars on the road again, parking lots that are actually full, and people, lots of people. Trust me, it's been a while. But as we're moving out of self-confinement, I couldn't help but consider the last couple of months. You see, I'm a writer, a storyteller. I like to think that what I do is important and has some value, although I do know some people who've read my works and don't necessarily agree with me, but that's another story for another time. Back when this lockdown thing started in an attempt to contain the spread of the virus, the government basically divided us into two groups. Those of us who were essential and those of us who were non-essential. Some of the essential people seemed obvious. Uh, First responders, nurses, doctors, even truck drivers who brought the food to our stores. But some of the people who made it to the essential list, well, let's just say it didn't seem like an obvious choice to me. If you sold marijuana at a pot dispensary now, you were essential. Hmm. If you sold alcohol, if you sold alcohol at a liquor store, not a bar, you were essential. If you killed babies at an abortion clinic, you were essential. If you sold lottery tickets that, oh, brought money into the state, you were essential. And this one really got me. Politicians. Even if they didn't show up to work, politicians were considered essential. I ask you, when has a politician ever been essential? And as for me, as I looked at all the pronouncements being made and the list being published, it became clear that my state decided my job telling stories wasn't all that important. Or to use the current phrase, I was non-essential. It seems the state would have been perfectly happy if I'd locked myself in my house and never set foot outside the door. Now, whether you're a storyteller or a story consumer, today's video is for those of you who, like me, have been classified as non-essential. Yes, I know you may live in a state where some restrictions have been lifted, but it hasn't changed your designation, you know. Even though you may be able to do more during the day, you were labeled non-essential. Now, before you start feeling sorry for yourself, you should ask yourself, who described you as non-essential? Was it the governor of your state, a county health agency, your employer, your friends, the media, maybe a complete strangers when you walked into a store and they made it very clear by their looks that you couldn't be there or shouldn't be there? Now, I suppose you could let all of those people define you, but I think it might be better to see how God identifies you. And there are two thoughts that I would like you to consider. First thought, God made you. The psalmist wrote, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now imagine that. The creator of the universe says he is responsible for you coming into existence. And he determined when you would be alive. And that means now, during this pandemic, you are not an accident. You are not a chance occurrence. 
God decided that you should be alive today. Second thought. God loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now you may have heard that verse before or seen people walking around carrying signs that said John 3.16 on it. Don't let the message slip by. Consider what it says. God loves you. And he loves you so much he sent his son Jesus to pay the penalty for your sins so that you can spend eternity with him. Trust me, that is a lot of love. Now, before I go, I know some of you were, were on that essential list and your life uh, was able to continue somewhat normally. Or you may be like me, one of those who were considered non-essential. But neither of those lists really define who you are. You are essential to God. And you are loved by God. So as you go about your day today, consider how you can be a light for Him. If you're around people, spend quality time with them. Spend time listening to them, encouraging them, being a friend. And if you don't have a lot of face-to-face -face contact, well, reach out to others through oh, Skype or Zoom, phone, email, text messages, letters. Letters, you know, those are the things we used to write. Uh, never mind. And take time to pray. Spend time in prayer with God. And then pray for others. God has placed you where you are at this moment in time so that people could know that he loves them as much as he loves you. It is a great time to be alive. And remember, you are essential to God.